My sense of smell grew to the point where when mom was preparing food, well before anything was cooked, well before anything was stirred together, I could smell each individual ingredient. But perhaps the biggest substitute for my eyes was my sense of hearing. I learned to listen to people's responses even while I was speaking. I could detect a sigh, a clearing of the throat, sometimes even a rapid head or body movement. And I developed a habit of pausing sometimes even in mid-sentence so that I could gain more information from their response even before they spoke. My hearing became a substitute for the things I could not see. When you're blind, the list is long of things that you cannot see. I could never see the beauty of a rose. Now, I could tell a rose. If you brought one in this room, I would know it. But by smell, not by its beauty. I never knew the magnificence of the sunset. I was aware each day of the temperature change as the sun finished its work. But the word sunset or the phrase sun going down, that was meaningless to me. As I drank from the river, I could never see my mirrored image. Friends tried to explain, but how could I know what a reflection was when I'd never seen the original? I could never see people speaking, but I could tell by the voices who was young and old. That was easy. I remember what it was like to be a small child but I could never really know what a newborn looked like. I could never see the beauty of a baby, or of a butterfly, or of a rainbow, or of a woman, or anything of God's creations. When you're blind, you see nothing. 
When you're born blind, you see absolutely nothing. People say, Bartimaeus, you just live in darkness. How would I know what darkness is? You see nothing. You know, sometimes what you don't see can actually be a good thing. My friends told me it was good. I could never see the constant staring as they led me into the marketplace each day. I could never see people crossing to the other side of the road to avoid my path. I could never see the pointing and mocking by the young boys as I sat and begged each day in the street. I think it was good that I could not see those things. But did you know that there are some things even a blind person can see? As I sat by the gates of Jericho and extended my cup, hoping for a coin or a small amount of food, I could see caring in the lives of the loved Unfortunately, I could also see how human beings could be so insensitive to each other. I could see selfishness. And in the lives and minds of handicapped people like myself, so much worse, I could see hopelessness. And hopeless is what I was until he came to jail. I was sitting by underneath the tree by the road to Jericho that day because someone had taken my normal spot over by the gate. And I heard a commotion in the crowd moving toward me. The noise grew in volume like, like the sound of an ocean wave growing closer and closer to the shore. I was I was prepared to ask what or who it was, but I didn't have to. I heard them calling his name, Jesus. That was not an uncommon name in Jericho, but I could tell by their voices this was Jesus of Nazareth. And as soon as that hit me, I joined right in. Jesus, the Son of David! Have mercy on me! I raised my voice to try to gain his attention. Jesus! Mercy! Have mercy on me! I got attention all right, but from those around me, several tried to rebuke me for wasting the Master's time. Even some of my own friends told me it was fruitless and tried to quiet me down, but to no avail. Because when in life you think you have nothing, then you risk nothing. Jesus! Son of David, have mercy on me, a beggar! And then the crowd was quiet. And of course, I could not see why. Jesus had stopped. And they were all waiting his next move. And then someone near me whispered, Great smiles on you, Bartimaeus. He beckons you. Christ calls for you. I dropped my cup, I dropped my robe, my staff. And I clumsily staggered forward. I blindly felt along until they grabbed me and took me in front of him, and I did not stop until I heard his voice. What will ye that I should do for you? 
And this time in my life, there was no hesitation. My sight, Lord, that I would receive my sight. My sight. And there was no hesitation from Christ either. And he responded, Receive thy sight. Go. Thy faith hath made thee holy. And when he said those words, light burst into my head and I did not know what it was. It was not gradual, but sudden. And intense to the point of a bit of pain mixed with a multitude of joys. Because I could see everyone there. Most of which I knew, but we have to wait for them to speak to know which was which because I only knew their voices. I was not even sure which one was Christ. And I had never seen eyes, but at that moment, every pair of eyes in that multitude were staring right at me. And from that moment on, I followed Him telling my story to all who would listen. And today, I tell you, I tell you I can see. I now know what a flower looks like that before I could only smell. I've seen a rainbow and I understand the frustration of those who tried to describe it to me, but how do you explain a rainbow to someone who does not know what the word color means. I now see the beauty of God's creation in a young child. The vision has been wonderful and miraculous, but not perfect. Because now I see also, things I wish I had never seen. I can now see the evil of prejudice that runs rampant in our world. Through tears, I've seen cruelty to innocent children by adults. I can see greed in the eyes of those who would do us harm for their own financial gain. I can see disrespect. In some of our young people, I see disrespect for their parents. I see disrespect for the laws of our land. And I see even disrespect for God Himself. But did you know, since Christ performed His miracle on me, there are still things I can't see? You say, Bartimaeus, you can see everything now. Not quite. I can't see why God chose a no good beggar like Christ to show his mercy. I can't see how God could willingly give his son that we can all have eternal life. And I can't see, I cannot see any reason so many reject this gift and choose eternity without Christ. When Christ gave me sight, he 
did not want me to go back to my post as a beggar. I followed him down a new path. When God opens your eyes spiritually as a Christian or as a church, He does not want you to remain the same. Follow the new path. It may not always be clear, but it is visible if you will see it. This one thing I know. There are many, many, many who still walk in spiritual blindness. God wants you and you and you and you to help them see.